Hey everybody, Don Mammals are here again. Today I'm going to talk about Tamron's 150 to 600 f 5.0 to 6.3 G2 lens. It's the second version of this lens that Tamron has made, and I've had mine for a while now. I'm going to cover some of the features that I like, some of the things I don't like about it, and I'm also going to show the sharpness that you can get out of this lens with several examples of situations that I was in with wildlife where I got awesomely sharp shots. So, come with me now, let's explore Tamron's 150-600 to G2 lens. Okay, just looking at the overall size and weight of the lens, you can see I've got it balanced on a gimbal head here, and as I zoom the lens, I'm starting off here at 150, and I zoom in here to 250, and then to 400, and then to 600. You can see that this lens has an extending barrel. And that does throw you off a little bit when you're balanced over your tripod and you want to make sure that you have the balance point. So now I'm a little bit to the front heavy, so I would have to move my gimbal and move my ball head a little bit to the back so that I'm more balanced. And so that's one thing to think about. It does have the extending barrel as you zoom in and out. Okay, there's a lock feature on the lens but it only locks the lens at the 150 millimeter range. So that means if you're gonna walk around with your lens, you turn it on and put the lock on, so that way it doesn't extend as you're walking until you want it to extend. Then you click the lock button off, and then of course you can zoom as you wish. And of course the lens comes with an included lens hood, and I recommend you use that all the time. That stops the sun from coming in and hitting the front element of your lens and causing ghosting and flares and things like that. And it just snaps off, turns around for when you're traveling, and then when you wanna use the lens, you just turn it back, turn it till you hear a click, and then rotate it counterclockwise until you hear another click, and then it's locked on and you're good to go. One feature that Tamron incorporated into their 150 to 600 lens that I really like is the tripod foot. So they grooved it out so that it's already got an Arca Swiss plate system built right into this foot. So you don't need an extra accessory plate that costs money, adds weight and bulk to this uh, setup here. It's already got the Arca Swiss plate system, so you can just snap that onto your gimbal head or your ball head and you're good to go. You don't need anything extra. It comes with the proper foot. Okay, let's cover the buttons here that are on the, on the barrel of the lens. At the top here you have your focus limiter switch. I leave that on full all the time, but you also have two other positions. You have for far away subjects, infinity to 10 meters. And then if you know your subject's gonna be fairly close, you got your 10 meters to 2.2 meters. But I find that the lens focus is just fast enough if I just leave it on the full and I don't mess with that. Next up, we have our AF-MF switch. Of course, that's your autofocus, manual focus. I leave it in autofocus all the time, and I have my camera set up to do a back button focus so that I can get the advantage of the autofocus, and if I want to do manual focus, then I can just manually focus the lens as well. Next up, we have our VC, that's our vibration compensation on off switch. Now, I'm going to give you how I use mine. I use the VC on when my shutter speed is less than about a thousandth of a second. Anything above a thousandth of a second, and I just switch the VC to the off. But if you don't have those fast shutter speeds, and you're shooting something that's got a slower shutter speed, something like a fiftieth of a second, or a hundredth of a second, or something like that, I turn my VC on, and then when you do that, you have a choice of three modes. So mode one, is your general all-around mode for all everyday photography. And you'll see the image through your viewfinder stop moving when you're on VC1. VC2 is a panning mode. So if you've got a subject that you can predict that's gonna move horizontally across your frame, then you would have put it in mode two. I never use mode two because with wildlife, it's rarely predictable. And mode three is for irregularly moving subjects. 
And that's the fastest one I find to react because you won't see it through the viewfinder. The image won't actually calm down, but your resulting pictures will show the effect of the VC when you have it in number three. So that's my go-to mode. When I'm in the VC, I have it in mode three. All right, as I said, I'd like to show some examples of the sharpness that you can get with the Tamron 150 to 600 G2 lens. So I've had mine for several years and I've been traveling around with it, but I went to Florida several times and here are some shots that I got of the common birds that you see in Florida and other wildlife. Here's a snowy egret and we can zoom in and see it at 100%, see the detail that you can capture. Here's another common bird that you see in Florida all the time, a great egret. Again, when a bird lets you get that close, you can see the kind of detail that you can capture. Here's an ibis, and a little bit closer on that. Here's a couple of gray squirrels that let me get close. And let's see how it does with some action stuff, some moving shots. Here's a great egret that had caught a fish, and a couple of different examples of that, and the kind of sharpness that you're after when you got a moving subject. Here's a blue heron that had caught a fish as well. And we went in tight on that to show the detail. All right, let's try a couple of real action shots with birds flying. Here's a night heron flying with some nesting material and an anhinga flying with nesting material as well. Then a great blue herring just cruising across in a blue sky. Now, how does the lens do with small birds? That's a good question. Small birds are always a big challenge for people. And let's see how this Tamron 150-6 held up when I went after small birds. Here was a Carolina wren singing in a swamp. And here was a warbler and a different type of warbler. And another one that had caught a dragonfly. Very nice sharpness out of this lens. Let's look at a couple of birds of prey. Here's a red-shouldered hawk. And here's a barred owl that had caught a crayfish. A couple of views of that. All right, and just some miscellaneous birds. Here's a limpkin. And then here's a woodpecker. Another night heron. I like the sharpness of the lens. I think that it's quick to react and to focus. And overall, I really enjoy using the Tamron 150 to 600. I appreciate you watching my videos. Thanks as always, and I'll see you soon.